The federal government has flagged more regulation for digital currencies. The change is part of what could be the biggest shake-up of the payment system in decades, with purchases increasingly made online. Dr Anton Didenko is an expert in banking law and fintech at the University of New South Wales, and he joins us now from Sydney. Dr Anton Didenko, welcome. So Australian authorities are considering the feasibility of a central digital currency. So break this down into very basic elements for us um, out there who know nothing about fintech. Just define for us what, what is digital currency and what would a central digital currency look like in Australia? Hello, Joe, and thank you for the question. And it's uh, a complicated one because a central bank digital currency is something that has been on the radars of central banks around the world for quite some time. And essentially it is a liability of a, a direct liability of a central bank that is available either for uh, commercial banks or for individuals, for consumers like you and me, depending on the design. So the idea behind a central bank digital currency is to create an additional instrument that can be used uh, widely for payments in the case of uh, retail uh, CBDC, that's what it is called. And um, I think the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia has recently flagged that there is not a strong enough public policy case for um, retail CBDC, that is for a, um, a central bank digital currency available for uh, consumers, but they have been investigating for quite some time the potential use cases for, of a wholesale CBDC, something that is used by banks to settle uh, operations between themselves. And um, the, the whole idea of a CBDC is getting so much traction right now because China is about to launch on a full scale, um, maybe perhaps even during the Olympics, its own CBDC platform. And other countries are also looking at this project and thinking whether they should do the same. And really the objectives that different regulators, different countries have uh, in designing their own CBDC are very, very different. For example, um, in Sweden, the central bank is thinking mm, the use of cash is declining. Therefore, what we need to do is think hard whether in the absence of cash, the entire payment system will be dominated by private payment services providers. And so there should be some kind of alternative provided directly by the government or on behalf of the government. And that would be the CBDC's answer. So has any country uh, done this in the world yet? Oh, uh, there have been uh, several projects. Um, uh, for example, the Central Bank of the Bahamas has launched uh, a live CBDC project. And there are certain proposals around the world to design one. Um, mostly the current uh, CBDC projects that we know about that have gone live are among um, developing countries, developing world, whereas all the major economies right now are only contemplating uh, whether they actually have a proper use case of a CBDC. For example, the Canadians are thinking of um, a CBDC as um, either a response in case of um, declining use of cash or a response to, say, China's uh, project. Um, and so that is really a big question whether it is needed. But I think we are, we are right now at a very interesting spot where there are so many CBDC projects, so many governments, uh, thinking about the, this concept right now, that some of them have already proposed that we need to uh, combine efforts. We need to come up with some kind of joint initiative that uh, connects different CBDC platforms uh, between themselves. And this may potentially help with cross-border payments, which have been historically a nightmare <laughs> in terms of uh, cost and timing of uh, cross-border payments. Yeah, the banks make so much money out of you when, when you go overseas and make payments. So, explain for us what this would mean practic practically. If Australia did adopt this 
and in five, ten years' time, I went to the supermarket to buy buy my groceries. Um, would I be pay paying with some kind of weird named? <laughs> it sounds weird now. Weird named digital currency, like there would be the the Australian Bitcoin or something. Explain for us how it work. Um. Supposedly, if it is a CBDC, and again, we don't know the design that will be chosen, and there are so many different designs that the Reserve Bank of Australia can opt for. Um, the biggest difference from Bitcoin in terms of a design is that a CBDC will unavoidably be centralized, whereas a Bitcoin is a completely decentralized system yeah. with the miners and uh, other third parties being involved. So it will be a project However, design, whatever technology it integrates, uh, that um, is ultimately controlled by the central bank. Right. And um, if we're talking about uh, retail CBDC, it means that you go to, to a grocery store and potentially take out your phone, and there you might have a certain app um, that allows you to pay. But um, when you pay using your mobile banking or when, when you uh, use your mobile apps, those are currently uh, offered by commercial banks, yep. the private institutions. Um, and uh, the difference of the CBDC is that new app provided by the, I suppose, Reserve Bank of Australia will be controlled ultimately and operated by the central bank and it will offer the liability uh, of a central bank itself rather than technically uh, a commercial bank. That will be the safest possible payment tool you can imagine because a central bank realistically cannot be driven uh, into a default and cannot go into bankruptcy because it is a central bank okay. uh, as opposed to a commercial bank uh, or other payment services provider. So we're talking about potentially a very, very safe uh, way of storing value perhaps the ultimate store of value. And it, since you mentioned, Joe, a Bitcoin, the, the exact opposite. Right, as right. Bitcoin goes up and down in terms of yeah. prices all and the time. And so would you be still be paying in Australian dollars or what would, what would it be called? Uh, the name, I think, is the prerogative, the naming of the initiative is the prerogative of uh, the central bank. But uh, yes, uh, it would be the Australian dollar for all uh, purposes. And supposedly, and this we, we have seen this in a number of jurisdictions that are planning a CBDC, it would, ha it would be considered a legal tender. So it would have the exactly same legal status as banknotes uh, and coins under Australian law, which must be accepted everywhere. So yes, uh, it, it, I suppose it would be called an EAUD or E-Australian uh, right. dollar. Yes, something like that. And it would have the exact legal power. Yes, that, that's the main attraction and probably be the safest store of value. And so how, yeah, yeah so this sounds like a, a revolution in the, the way we uh, pay for things glo globally that's going to happen. How soon do you see this happening? Do you see it's likely that this will be the way things are done in five years time or is that too soon? Five years time, maybe. Longer than that, uh, I had to put my money on that. And the, I think the, the, the the real answer to the question is it depends on the challenge we're trying to resolve in this CBDC project because it's not just an initiative for the sake of creating something new, something fancy. It must solve a certain problem. Uh, I don't see the Australian economy going cashless anytime soon, so we don't really face the challenges of Sweden. So we don't have that push, and that's why the central bank is saying, well, we don't really have a use case for now for retail CBDC. But we see China launching its CBDC project um, and we see other major economies lining up and also joining forces in joint initiatives, joint research. So if China launches a project, it'll be a strong push for Australia yeah. to push for its own CBDC, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and other, other benefits like cross-border payments, yes, they're, they're, they're good, they're helpful, but to, to make central, the central bank react we need something like a CBDC launched not by the Bahamas, but yeah. by a major economy out there. Yeah. And ca can you see a day where there will be some kind of glo global currency rather than national currencies? I don't see there being a global currency anytime soon. 
But the interesting development that has been happening over the past year or so is, is, is what is called an M. CBDC, that is multi-CBDC initiatives. That means that different central banks will not uh, try and uh, you know, lose their power to issue a domestic CBDC, but at the same time, central banks are talking to each other, they're designing uh, platforms or considering the design of a platform that will try and connect at the international level, different domestic CBDCs. But we are still far, far away yeah. from some kind of global digital currency, I'm afraid.